and we watch in silence. The death of Queen Elizabeth II on September 8th at the age of 96 represents a monumental shift for the British monarchy and the people of England. Royals have died before, of course, but the Queen ruled for more than 70 years and represented a certain stability and decorum that held the institution of the royal family together as it slowly grew more visibly anachronistic and battered by endless scandals. Naturally, her passing has prompted countless efforts to put her reign in the proper historical context. Think of her as the Wilt Chamberlain of monarchs, setting records and altering paradigms that haven't been touched before and likely will not be after. Number 10. The Queen has become the world's second longest reigning monarch. Elizabeth was queen for 70 years and 214 days, making her the longest reigning British monarch and the second longest reigning monarch of all time, one of just four to rule for seven or more decades. Just ahead of her is Louis XIV of France at 72 years and 110 days, 1643 to 1715, who benefited from a head start, ascending the throne at just five years old. Just behind the queen, Bumabal Aduliadij, a.k.a. Rama 9, of Thailand, 1946 to 2016, 70 years and 126 days, and Johann II of Liechtenstein, 1858 to 1929, 70 years and 91 days. Number 9. At the time of her death, at least nine out of every ten living human beings have never known a British monarch other than Elizabeth. Number eight. She's danced with presidents, ridden with them. She was queen for almost 30% of U.S. history. Number seven. Britain has its 56th Prime Minister, Liz Truss, the longest serving member. Her rule spanned 15 British prime ministers, with Liz Truss becoming the latest just two days before the Queen died, and 14 American presidents, all of whom she met with in person besides Lyndon Johnson. Number 6. Um, no, he's lucky enough not to. <laughs> the Queen ruled for so long that she made her eldest son, Charles, the longest serving heir apparent in British history at 73. King Charles III took over immediately upon her death, though an official coronation will not take place until after a period of national mourning. Number 5. During her reign, the Queen traveled over 1 million miles, or the equivalent of 40 journeys around the earth. That makes her easily the most well-traveled monarch in British history. Number 4. Queen Elizabeth II's face is on every note and coin. The Queen's wealth is tricky to calculate. Forbes recently estimated the value of the royal family's holdings at $28 billion, although as the New York Times points out, not all of that belongs to the Windsors personally, profit generated by the $16.5 billion crown estate portfolio of real estate holdings, for instance, goes to the government, with a stipend going back to the royal family in return. Fortune puts the Queen's private wealth at $500 million, that will go to King Charles, and he won't have to pay an inheritance tax. Number 3. The crown jewels include the largest diamond ever found, the Cullinan, which weighed 3,106 carats before it was cut into nine separate diamonds. The largest of those gems is set inside the sovereign scepter with cross, which is used at coronations and other important events. The royal family says the Cullinan was presented as a gift from the British colony of the Transvaal Republic in 1907, but South African township leaders have claimed it was stolen and demanded its return. Number 2 In a way, I didn't have an apprenticeship. My father died much too young. The Queen's coronation in June 1953 was the first major royal event to be fully broadcast on TV. Number 1. At the age of 19, Elizabeth was the first female British royal to serve as an active duty military member. She drove and worked on a range of military vehicles during World War II, including ambulances, as part of the Auxiliary Territorial Service. 